Article 24, Prohibition of No Trade Contracts. Section 1, General Limitation. No player contract may contain any prohibition or limitation of an NBA team's right to assign such contract to another NBA team. Section 2. Exceptions to General Limitation A player contract may contain, in Exhibit 4 of the contract, a trade bonus, which is subject to the following. It will be payable only the first time that the contract is traded, provided that if the contract is signed to trade, meaning a sign and trade, the bonus will not apply to the initial trade, but to the second time the contract is traded. The trade bonus will not exceed 15% of the base comp remaining to be earned, excluding any option year if not yet exercised. The only allowable amendments to Exhibit 4 will be the specification of the amount of the trade bonus expressed as either a specific percent of the base compensation remaining to be earned or a specific dollar amount not to exceed a specific percentage of base compensation to be earned. And in connection with the extension the that contains a trade bonus, the specification of whether the trade bonus will apply to the extended term. A contract that does not contain a trade bonus when signed cannot be amended to add one, except that if the contract is extended, other than to trade the extended contract, the contract may be amended simultaneously to provide for a trade bonus that will be payable only the first time the contract is traded and not as a result of any subsequent trade and may be amended simultaneously to provide for a trade bonus that will not apply to the initial trade, but instead be payable only if the extended contract is traded a second time. If a contract is extended that contains a trade bonus that hasn't previously been earned, may be amended simultaneously to provide that the trade bonus provision will not be applicable to the extended term. The extension must include a replacement Exhibit 4 with the same terms as the original Exhibit 4, but also providing that the, quote, foregoing trade bonus will not be applicable with respect to the extended term of this contract, end quote. To illustrate, in such case, if a player is first traded during the remainder of the original term, i.e. prior to the extended term, then the player's trade bonus will be calculated based solely on the base compensation remaining to be earned pursuant to the original term and not in respect of the extended term. And if the player is first traded during the extended term, the trade bonus will not apply to that initial trade or any, any subsequent trade during the extended term. In no event shall a trade bonus in a contract be payable more than once. A contract entered into by a player who has eight or more years of service and who has rendered four years of service for the NBA team entering into that contract may contain a prohibition or limitation of the team's right to trade that contract to another team. Article 25, Limitation on Deferred Compensation. Section 1, General Limitation. No uniform player contract can provide for deferred compensation that exceeds 25% of the player's compensation for the season. Section 2. Attribution. All player contracts will specify the seasons to which any deferred compensation is attributable. Article 27. Right of set-off. Section 1. Set-off calculation. When a, quote, first team terminates a player contract, or, quote, the first contract, where the first team, following the termination, continues to be liable for, for unearned base compensation, uh, including any unearned deferred base compensation, the first team's liability shall be reduced pro rata by a portion of the compensation earned by the player from the, quote, subsequent teams during each salary cap covered by the term of the first contract, including but not limited to compensation earned but not paid during that period. The amount of the reduction in the first team's liability, or the, quote, set-off amount, shall be calculated for each salary cap year covered by the term of the first contract via three step, a three-step process that you can find on page 373. Now, a team shall not be required to enforce its set-off right against a player in respect of compensation earned by the player from a non-NBA subsequent team. The first team may require evidence, such as a copy of the player's new contract, of the compensation to be earned for any subsequent teams. 
when a player receives compensation from a non-NBA subsequent team on a net of tax basis, then for the purposes of calculating the amount of set-off to which the NBA team is entitled, the compensation from the non-NBA subsequent team is going to be equal to the net of tax compensation divided by 0.65, reflecting a deemed 35% tax rate, provided, however, that the adjustment, that such adjustment from the non-NBA subsequent team will not be made or shall not be modified accordingly if the player can establish that taxes were not paid or exceed the actual amount paid by the player's non-NBA subsequent team. In the event a player's compensation is reduced and the team is unable to affect all or a portion of the reduction through payroll deductions, the NBA shall have the right to direct any subsequent team that is an NBA team to withhold and unrecoup any unrecouped amounts from the player's compensation under his new uniform player contract and remit such amounts to the first team. To the extent that that remedy is insufficient to affect the full recoupment of the set-off amount, the NBA and Players Association will negotiate in good faith to agree on, a supplemental, on supplemental measures that are appropriate to affect the recoupment. Section 2. Successive Terminations in the event of successive terminations by NBA teams of player contracts involving the same player, the team first to terminate shall be entitled to the right of set-off until its compensation liability has been eliminated in its entirety, and the right of set-off shall then pass in order of the teams terminating any subsequent contracts. Section 3. Deferred Compensation In calculating the amount of set-off to which a team may be entitled, the unearned deferred compensation payable to a player for or with respect to a period covered by the terminated contract will be discounted on an annual basis by the prime rate reported in the, quote, money rates column of the Wall Street Journal. Section 4, Waiver of Set-Off Right. A team and a player may agree in an amendment to an already existing player contract to modify or eliminate the set-off right. Section 5, Stretch protected salary. In the event a team terminates a player contract and the payment of the player's protected comp for any remaining salary years under the first contract is stretched, the quote mandatory stretch provision, and a player subsequently earns compensation from another professional basketball team triggering a right of set off, the amount of the set off of which the first team may be entitled shall be calculated based on the unearned base comp in respect of each salary cap year covered by the term of the first contract and not with regard to how such ba such protected base compensation are is payable to the player pursuant to the mandatory stretch provision. The set off amount in respect of each of the remaining cap years in which the related unearned base compensation is stretched with the mandatory stretch provision shall be allocated such that each of the players stretch protected compensation payments via the applicable salary cap year is reduced on an equal basis over the applicable stretch period, i.e. for the first cap year with respect to which a player's protected compensation is stretched over the entire stretch period and for any subsequent cap years over the remaining stretch period. In no event shall a team be entitled to set off under a first contract in respect of compensation earned by a player for services as a player from a subsequent team during a salary cap year occurring after the term of the first contract. In the event a player's protected comp for any remaining cap year under a first contract is stretched for cash purposes with the mandatory stress provision and the first team also elects to stretch the player's salary under the first contract for cap purposes, then the set-off amount in respect of each of the remaining cap years of the first contract that is stretched for cap purposes will be allocated equally to reduce the player's reattributed salary amounts over the applicable stretch period in the manner described via Section 5A. There are some examples uh, for clarity on pages 376, 377 um, that you should refer to when it comes to set off um, via traded or terminated contracts or what have you. Article 28, Media Rights. Section 2, No Suit. The Players Association for itself and present and future NBA players covenants not to sue the NBA, all league-related entities, 
that generate BRI and all NBA teams or any of their respective past, present, or future owners acting in their capacity with respect to the use of ex- exhibition, distribution, or license in any or all media of any performances by any player rendered under this agreement. Section 3, Unauthorized Endorsement slash Sponsor Promotion. Section 1 does not confer any right or authority for the NBA, any league-related entity or NBA team to use or authorize any third party to use any performance by a player that constitutes an unauthorized endorsement by such player of a third party's brand or, quote, endorsement, or authorize any third party to use any performance by a player that constitutes an unauthorized sponsor promotion via paragraph 14C of the Uniform Player Contract. Now, for clarity, it will not be an endorsement for the NBA to use or authorize in third-party advertising and promotional materials footage of a player's participation in NBA games that do not unduly focus on the player in a manner that leads a consumer to believe that the player is a spokesman for a third-party commercial product or service, provided that it's independent of of and is not related to determining whether a use is or is not an unauthorized sponsor promotion and any use of a player's player attributes that has been expressly authorized by the player not including the uniform player contract will not be an unauthorized endorsement or an unauthorized sponsor promotion promotional enhancements include branded backboard slide outs branded featured trackers, sponsor starting lineups, branded virtual lineups, virtual courtside signage, virtual court signage, branded statistical presentations, studio show backdrops, branded halftime desk signage, a sponsored, quote, top plays feature and sponsored, quote, audio drop and mention. Just some random media type things and language that we probably don't need to know about, but it's Good to have the information. Article 29, Miscellaneous. Section 1, Active Roster Size. Each team agrees to have 12 or 13 players on its active list and to have a minimum of 8 players on the bench for all regular season games. From time to time is appropriate, but for no more than two two consecutive weeks at a time during the regular season, they can have 11 players on, on the active list. And during the period from the day following the last day of the regular season or the day following the team's last playoff game until the day before the first day of the following regular season, the maximum number of players, including two-way players, on the active list can be 20. Players on the inactive list will be transferred to the active list following the last day of the regular season or the last playoff game. Section 2, Inactive Roster. Each team can only have two players on its inactive list for all regular season games. Uh, Any team that has 11 or 12 players on the active list may from time to time, but for no more than two consecutive weeks, have one player on its inactive list. And any team that has 13 players on the active list may have one player on its inactive list and from time to time and for no more than two consecutive weeks have zero players on its inactive list. For each two-way player that a team has on the active list or an active list, the minimum inactive list requirements will be increased by one for that team. Section 3, Two-Way Roster. A two-way player will be placed on the team's active list or inactive list while the two-way player is providing services to the NBA team and two-way list while the two-way player is providing services for the G League team prior to the start of the G League training camp or after the completion of the G League playoffs while not providing services to the NBA team. The two-way list will only exist between the first day of the NBA regular season and the last day of the NBA regular season or the last day of the team's playoff game. For teams that do not qualify for the playoffs, all players on the two-way list are transferred to the active list on the day following the last day of the last regular season. For teams that qualify for the playoffs, the two-way list is transferred to the active list following the team's last playoff game. 
a two-way player is not eligible to be designated on an NBA team's playoff roster or participate in playoff games, but is permitted to travel and practice with the team and remain on the team's inactive list during the playoffs, provided a player who has previously who was previously a two-way player but prior to the start of the team's last regular season game either signs a standard NBA contract or has his contract converted by the team to a standard NBA contract is eligible um, to be on the NBA team's playoff roster and participate in playoff games. Section 4, Playoff Eligibility Waiver Deadline. Any player with respect to whom a request for waivers has been made after March 1 is not eligible to participate in playoff games dur- during the then current season unless the player has been acquired by a team whose active list is reduced to eight due to injury or illness. And if a waiver request is made at any time on or before March 1 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, that player will remain eligible for the playoffs. Section 5, Minimum League-Wide Roster. Beginning with the 17-18 season, if for two consecutive regular seasons, NBA teams in the aggregate employ an average of less than 14 and a half players, excluding two-way players, per team, then for each regular season that follows, the minimum inactive list requirements are going to be increased by one, quote, league-wide roster increase. So teams are required to employ 15 players per team, excluding the two-way players. Now, in order to measure the foregoing rules regarding minimum league-wide rosters, um, there's a four-step process on page 384. Step one is for each player signed to a player contract, including rest of season or 10-day, but excluding two-way contracts during the regular season, Determine the number of days during that season that that player was carried on a team's active list or inactive list, and that's, quote, duty days. Step two, determine the total duty days for all players for that season by adding together the results for each player from step one. And step three, you're going to multiply the number of NBA teams that play games during that regular season by 2,480 days. Step four, if for two consecutive seasons, beginning with the seventeen eighteen season, the result in step two is a bu- uh, the result in step two is less than the result in step three, then the league wide roster increase will be triggered. Section six: Playing rules and officiating. Up to four reps of the players' association, three of whom will be active or recently retired players, are permitted to attend the meetings. Of and have a vote on the NBA Competition Committee with respect to issues relating to NBA playing rules and officiating. Section 8, Game Tickets. In the event that a team provides complimentary tickets to the players, the team may provide up to four tickets per home game and up to two for per row game. Teams may sell additional tickets to players uh, provided that those sales will be no less than the season ticket holder prices. Now, seat locations for complimentary tickets have to be in the lower bowl and may not be on the floor or in a luxury suite. In the event that a team provides complimentary tickets to the players for road games, each player um, will be provided the same number of tickets. Teams are prohibited from providing tickets to players on other teams, and and players can't accept tickets from other teams. Any player found to be selling or reselling complimentary tickets are going to be prohibited from receiving tickets subsequently. In the event that a team provides home game tickets um, to the players, then seat locations must be allocated to the players based on seniority uh, and based on years of service. Section 9, League Pass. This is just a lot of goody information to know right here. So all players uh, on, a, on a contract, except 10 days or two ways, which is a shame, is they're going to get free league, league pass broadband. Section 10, release for fighting. Each NBA team releases and waives every claim it may have against any player employed by other NBA teams for injuries sustained in connection with fighting uh, during the course of a game. Section 11, Limitation on Player Ownership. 
No NBA player may acquire or hold a direct or indirect interest in the ownership of any NBA team, provided they may have an ownership of publicly traded securities constituting less than 5% of the ownership interest in a company or entity that directly or indirectly owns an NBA team. Section 12, non-disclosure. The parties agree that the economic terms of an individual uniform player contract shall not be disclosed to the media. That concludes Articles 24 to 29, pages 368 to 389, covering prohibition of no trade contracts, right of set off, media rights, and miscellaneous via active and inactive rosters. Happy studying. See you at the top.